weeks. So, you know, if I were to really summarize, you know, I can actually put them into four broad buckets. So what is it the, what are the customers seeking today in a COVID-19 world? The first thing that the customer is telling us, address my concern. So what is the customer telling an organization here? The customer is telling an organization that I have a problem. Can you address my concerns? And can you really help me to navigate the pandemic? That's what the first thing address my concern is all about. The second voice that one hears from the customer today, safety is paramount. Today, what the customer really wants from businesses is that there should be a safety first mindset in everything that the organization does. What is the third thing that you hear from customer today? Or what is it that they are expecting? The third thing that they are expecting today, home is the world. What does this mean? This essentially means today, customer does whole lot of things from home. You're working from home, you're exercising from home, you're learning from home. What the customer is seeking from businesses is that, can you really support me in my day-to-day -day activities? And of course, the last one, which is very important, what the customer is also telling us that focus on the familiar. So the customer is telling us that I don't want any experimentation. I want familiar products. I want familiar experiences. I want things which are of value and I want things which are healthy. So, you know, these are the four, four broad voices that one hears from customers today. So let's take this conversation forward. So let's look at the first voice. What is the first voice? As I said, address my concern, right? And what is address my concern? Address my concern essentially means customers want businesses to help them to navigate the pandemic. And to really address this, there are two strategies which organizations can adopt. The first strategy is communicate, communicate, communicate. And the second strategy is demonstrate care. Uh, let's first focus on the first strategy. The first strategy, communicate, communicate, communicate. To make this strategy happen, there are two tactics that we can look at. The first tactic is sharing the steps being taken to handle the crisis and what is it that, what is being done for the employees. Let's, re let's really understand this in detail. You know what, during a pandemic, customers look to companies for guidance and clarity. Hence, it's important for companies to communicate with transparency and integrity. Companies need to be authentic, direct, and honest. They need to provide actionable information that will be useful to customers right now. Hence, businesses and organizations should reach out to customers and share how they have been impacted. So maybe, you know, one of the first things which businesses should do, they should proactively go out and tell their customers how they have been impacted. And then what should they do? They should also talk around production, delivery, policy, and process issues. So, you know, this is something which businesses should, should do to really address the concern of customers. I will talk, give you two good examples to uh, explain this concept. So, you know, when this pandemic broke out in the month of February, Fiat Chrysler Automobile, you know, uh, announced this in mid -feb February that it was temporarily halting production at a factory in Serbia because it could not get parts from China. And then, you know, what Chrys Fiat Chrysler went on to do, it went ahead and communicated with customer all the steps that they are going to take to meet customer's demand. The other example, which is which I think other organization who have done very well as far as this crisis is concerned is Cisco. Cisco, as all of you know, is a global organization. You know, they have manufacturing operations all over the world. So one of the things that they did very proactively from the very beginning of the pandemic, they went out and told their customers, what is the status of production? What is the status of availability? 
even today morning if you go to their website you can really see the you can really s s uh, get to know about the status of all their production units for example today you would you would read just now what they say that all their manufacturing locations are working even in countries where there is restriction they have special permission to really carry out production so you know these are great examples wherein organizations have really been proactive in communicating to the customer the steps being taken to handle the crisis the second tactic which organizations really need to remember that they need to demonstrate empathy and how do you demonstrate empathy you demonstrate empathy by listening by understanding by responding and reassuring you know one of the things that you need to remember as business that a business would always be remembered by the customer for how easy it has been not how frustrating it was for the customer hence i think it is on the organizations to reach out to customers before they come back stressed and worried one of the things you know i always recommend all my clients is that during a crisis like this they need to monitor call center data look at social media and also look at other qualitative inputs very very important which businesses need to remember they should not lie and provide a single version of truth what does this mean you know there could be many people who could be interacting with the customer what is very important is to make sure everybody gives the same in information and that is what i mean by having a single version of of truth also the other thing that is very important which businesses really need to remember because you know at times you may have to communicate with the uh, uh, with your customer in person so the tone you know that you use should be relatable and should communicate that we are all in this together even even if if a business is responding through phone video chat there are two things that i always recommend the first one is please use phrases that convey empathy and use positive language now the other thing that you know businesses need to remember that today most organizations have a website i think it's the responsibility of organizations to really make sure that the websites are up to date so that if the customers want any information they can go there and got get all relevant information and even if they need to call a call center the number of questions should be very less during this pandemic one of the thing that i am observing you know forward looking organizations are doing many of uh, some of them have really set up uh, you know dedicated helplines and these are covid 19 helplines for example there is this uh, travel uh, uh, company in asia which is known as cleartrip.com so you know if you really go to their website they have a link and if you put if you press the link it takes you to the call center and the customer can get all his or her concern get addressed the other thing that you really need to remember when you really talk about empathy during a crisis like this that always try and interact with customer in the channel of their choice right what this means if you believe your consumers are comfortable using whatsapp i think it makes sense to talk to them through whatsapp and address their customer service issues the other thing that i that i am recommending to all my clients especially for the companies who have not begun their journey this is a great opportunity to use social media for customer service because as it is there is there are tons of data which tell us the benefit of using social media for customer service if you look at the slide which is on your screen there is some data which i wanted to share you know what the 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 uh, what we know from research that if you use social media your customer satisfaction scores go up by more than 20% if you really look at the cost side serving customers through social media is almost one sixth 
of the cost that you would spend in serving customers to a call center and last but not the least this is uh, what it all the what one of the research says that if you use social media you know there is 30 to 50% likelihood that customers will come back and do repeat purchase now remember this is the data from normal times my sense in a crisis like this these figures will only go up the other thing that i think organizations should really remember during a crisis like this is please make it easy for customers to solve their problem and there are three examples that i want to talk about this is from europe uh, the companies that i'm going to delve on are ryanair tui group and hayes travels so ryanair as some of you are familiar is the irish budget airlines so this organization has been struggling to process its backlog right so as its ceo michael o'leary recently mentioned to bbc that the organization could take up to 6 months to refund passengers for flight can cancellation this has really made customers very unhappy and there's been a lot of criticism around it the other example that i wanted to talk about is tui group tui group is actually a large anglo german you know travel company so what this organization did just before or just when the pandemic started they went ahead and changed the policy what they said to customers that in case if you want to get a refund first you will get a credit note and to get this credit note you have to call up a call center so today when consumers are reaching out to the call center they are struggling there is lot of wait time so you know this is also peeved the customer contrary to that you know if you really look at hayes travel a uh, hayes, hayes travel is uh, is uk's largest travel agent so what they did when the pandemic started the first thing that they did they apologized to the customer and they just did two things they gave customers two options and what were the two option the first option was they told the customer that if you want the money back we will just give you the money back the second thing that they said that in case if you want you can postpone the trip you know what happened two third of the customers went ahead and postponed the trip i think the take away for businesses is that if you make it easy for customers and give them options they really love it and this is something organizations need to remember let's look at the next strategy next strategy to address the voice which is address my concern the next strategy is demonstrate care and how do you demonstrate care you demonstrate care by reducing financial distress and by doing something more so let's look at each each one of them you know in a crisis like this companies that address financial concerns for customers rise above the rest hence companies should work towards easing financial distress so that customers can spend more energy on their families and their health and well being the type of things which businesses can do they can you know pause loan repayment they can structure restructure ex existing loans they they can increase access to capital they can waive fees they can change uh payment terms you know there are a whole lot of things which organizations can do and we see many banks many companies doing this world over you know what this does when you really help a customer during financial stress it actually helps to solidify you know relationship with them and helps to build uh, uh, build loyalty the other tactic you know which customers which organizations need to do is crisis like this is a great opportunity for cust for organizations to do something more than normal so what you as an organization should do you should give something more than what the customer expects so what are the things that you can do the first thing that you can do is maybe you can give something free maybe you can do something extra or maybe you can just go above and beyond so i'll give you some examples of organizations what they are doing uh for example united overseas bank this is a a, a fairly well well known bank in thailand and thailand is a country in asia Uh, and i'm sure all of you are familiar so what this bank has done it is now offering complimentary income replacement and life insurance for customers who contract covid-19 
let's talk about microsoft all of you are familiar with microsoft microsoft has microsoft has offered a free 6 month version a trial version of of microsoft teams to all businesses who want to use it today so irrespective of irrespective of where you are based in the world today if you, if you have a company however small or big you are if you want to use microsoft teams microsoft is offering you offering it to you for 6 months if you look at the company remote hq it is also offering free use of its platform for the next couple of months i will talk about another large global organ indian organization called aditya billa group so you know this is a 40 billion dollar conglomerate uh, based out of india so they have customers all over the world so what they are doing senior leaders of this organization are talking to businesses world over and advising them on matters related to business for example you know they are having online workshops like this on branding on business strategy so you know these are the type of things which customers really love let me give you an example from the consumer durable space and the example that i have over here is hire hire as you all know is the chinese consumer durables company what it has done and at least in many of the asian markets it has extended its warranty so you know when you do take steps like this it demonstrates care and goes to address the concerns of the customer let's look at the second voice which i mentioned earlier in in the presentation the second voice today that we hear from the uh, customer is safety is paramount for me right because everybody is concerned about health so what the customer is seeking from organizations and business that everything that you do please make sure it has got a safety first mindset and there are two strategies which businesses can adopt the first one is who what when and the second one is touch free operations let's look at each one of them uh, under who what when strategy there are two tactics which companies can adopt the first one is provide visibility on sourcing processing and delivery and second one is what is being done for employees and i'll give you two examples so you know uh, there is this company in india called zomato uh, today they operate in many asian countries so they are essentially into delivering food in customers home so after after the uh, covid-19 pandemic broke out you know every time the 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 the, the delivery a uh, person goes out to deliver you know you can actually see in in his app in in the phone you know uh, uh, the health condition of the delivery boy where was the food made the safety conditions that were put together because you know what customers are looking for visibility on how their product and services are going to be delivered in a pandemic so one of the things that customers are seeking today they want complete visibility of the supply chain they want to know whether you deliver a product or a service they would like to know that it has been done in the right manner taking into account all safety conditions i want to give you another example from china in china they have this company called metuen and you can see it on your slide so this is again an app you know it's again an application wherein you know you can it's on your uh, smartphone you can use that app for ordering uh, getting food through this delivery uh, application so what really happens when this delivery person comes he he comes and delivers the food at your door and if you have gone for contactless delivery contactless delivery as you know it there is no touch between the customer and the delivery boy so if you have gone for contactless delivery what this guy does this delivery boy together with the food he he drops in a small card you see that on your slide that uh, that uh, that person uh, holding a small card the card has the following details the card has the body temperature of all the cooks who are involved in making the food the card has the temperature of the delivery boy the card has details about when the equipment used for making the food was disinfected the card 
has details about offers. And then what this guy does, he delivers the product. And then after he has delivered the product, he calls up the customer and tells him or her that, uh, that the product has been delivered. So, you know, what steps like these do when organizations give such visibility to customers, customers just love it. Let me give you another example. Uh, this is a picture that you see. It has been taken in Shanghai, in China. Uh, this is of a supermarket chain called Hama. Hama is actually a, a large supermarket chain uh, based in China. It is uh, owned by the Alibaba Group. It has more than 150 stores in China. These are absolutely high-tech stores, you know, high-technology stores. This store has a feature wherein it, you know, they are able to tell customers any food items farm to store journey. So let's say if you're buying a cauliflower. So next to the cauliflower, there's a QR code. You can scan your phone. And in that, uh, in your phone, you can get visibility of all the details on how the product moved from the farm to the store. And you know, the, the, uh, what, what this QR code throws up, it includes pictures of distributors, business license, food safety certificates, when was a product picked up? So, you know, this is a great uh, way of giving visibility to customers. And the way I look at it, many more organizations will adopt technologies like this. Of course, it's going to be expensive. But the way I look at it, more and more retail chains would have to really look at solutions like this. The other tactic that organizations really need to keep in mind is you really need to tell the customer what is being done for the employees. The reason why customers want to know about employees, not because they care for them. The reason they want to know, because they just want to make sure that the employees are being treated in the right condition so that when the product or service gets delivered, it's in the way that the customer wants. So the picture that you see on a slide, this is from Unilever. So if you really go to the Unilever site today, you will see all the safety protocols that are being followed for the employees. So this is really very assuring for the customer. The customer actually knows that if I'm taking a Unilever product, the employees have really been taken care of and they have followed all the food safety protocols. Let me look at the next strategy to address this safety is paramount voice of customer. Uh, under uh, the next strategy is touch free operations and under touch free operations to make this happen, you need two tactics. The first tactic is make touch points invisible. And uh, the, the other is adopt emerging technologies. So let's let me really understand what this means, making touch point contactless. So, you know, uh, one of the things that you will really see going forward is that more and more organizations will want that the touch points which are there in the customer's journey, they will try and eliminate human contact. And that's what it means by making touch points contactless. So let me really talk about some innovations which companies are, have already adopted and I'm sure it's already being done in a country like Mexico. Things like contactless payments, right? So, you know, you can use a debit, debit card, you can use a credit card, you can use a smartphone, you know, having an RFID or uh, NFC technology. So, you know, when you have something like this, the customer doesn't really want to handle cash. So he just scans his phone and makes the payment. So that's one example. Let me give another example. This is a small innovation, you know, to really make uh, touch points contactless. And this is happening in many retail stores globally. So, you know, they are putting in place these plexiglass knees guards. So, you know, this really gives comfort to the customer that he's not coming in contact with the server. And the server is also very happy that he's not in coming in contact with, uh, with the customer. So both of them are happy. And finally, you are able to make a touch point contactless. Let me give another example. And uh, uh, this is something which is very, very uh, has become very common in certain countries like uh, uh, China, New Zealand, and uh, even in a country like India, they are already talking about it. There are some restaurants in 
uh, in Singapore who offer this uh, value proposition. So this is about contactless uh, dining. So what is contactless uh, dining? Contactless dining essentially removes non-essential human interaction and replaces it, it with seamless technology. So typically in a dining process, let's say when you go to a restaurant, you know, there are many touch points. The whole focus of contactless dining is, can I really make it contactless, especially in those touch points? So let's see how this will work. This works in this way. Let's say you want to go to a restaurant. So the first thing that you will do, you'll use your smartphone and you'll book, book a restaurant. Once, when you book a restaurant, you will also order the meals that you want. So by the time you reach the restaurant, the meals are ready. And then while you are in the restaurant, let's say you want to add some more items. What is it that you will do? You will use a QR code. So there is a QR code which is kept on the table. You'll use a QR code and using your phone, you'll order the extra meals. After you've ordered the meal, the one that you've ordered through the QR code and the earlier meal which has been ordered through the, from your home, both the meals, they come to your table. How is the meal delivered to your table? It's delivered, it can be delivered in two ways. One is, of course, a human being can get it or, you know, there can be robots. And of course, the last but not the least, what happens is that, you know, you make payment uh, through a contactless technology as we discussed earlier. So this is a contactless dining experience. So, you know, you will see more and more going forward, such value propositions being offered to customer because that's what the customers would demand for. Uh, this is another example uh, which Airbus has been offering uh, towards you know, improving uh, customer experience in a COVID-19 world. So Airbus, beginning last month, they are off, off, uh, offering contactless plane delivery. So what is contactless plane delivery? Now, traveling far away to pick up for a new aircraft is probably not considered an essential journey for any organization today. Given the infection, no organization would really want its employees to travel to an aircraft manufacturer to get their aircrafts uh, to their home country. So what has Airbus really done? So when you really buy an aircraft, there are three stages. The first stage, stage is wherein the customer really goes, inspects the aircraft and kicks the tires and then says, whether the plane is okay or not. So what Airbus has done here, Airbus has appointed local outsourced agencies whom the customer can appoint and they can do this activity on behalf of the customer. So that is the first stage. The second stage typically of a, a plane delivery process is wherein, you know, the, the, wherein there is a lot of paperwork which happens, right? What are the type of paperwork? Things like transfer of title, invoicing, some last bit of negotiation, etc. So what Airbus has done, Airbus has completely automated this process. So a customer can do all this sitting in a home country and they are calling this as e-delivery. And of course, the final stage, the final stage is when, you know, typically a customer would fly down to the manufacturing location, pick up the aircraft and come to its home country. So, you know what uh, Airbus has done here? Airbus has again appointed agencies and small companies who, are, who would do this job for the customer. So they will sanitize the aircraft and finally deliver the aircraft to the customer's country. So, you know, this is a great innovation, I think, which is from uh, Airbus's side. Uh, recently, Airbus delivered two aircrafts to Pegasus Airlines in Turkey using contactless delivery. Uh, this is from North America, from United States of America, and many of you are familiar. This is the, the picture of Amazon Go stores, right? Uh, so as many of you are aware, Amazon Go has stores which have these just walkout system. So what happens here? You know, it lets you check in to the store at a turnstile at the front of the store using your mobile phone. You pick up whatever you want to buy and then leave, uh, leave the, the store without even meeting a cashier. So the entire experience is contactless. The good news is Amazon has started offering this just walkout system to other retailers beginning last two weeks. 
so you know you will see more and more such contactless innovations going forward now let's talk about some uh, emerging technologies which will really get adopted you know to really provide customer experience in a covid 19 world the first one is robots now the usage of robots are not really new right today i mean if you really talk about many markets in asia if you talk about singapore if you talk about japan if you talk about uh, uh, china you know there are hotels which have been doing supplies room service housekeeping all being done by robots robots have also been used for cleaning offices etc but you know what after the pandemic uh, especially in china what has been observed and of course many other countries robots have been used for transporting medical supplies they have been used for checking temperature of patients dispensing sanitizers cleaning of hospitals etc but the way i look at it going forward you know we will see robots being used for last mile delivery and we will talk more about last mile delivery later but let me give you another example of robots i also see robots being used for making food items for example uh, the picture that you see on your slide is of flippy robot flippy robot is from miser robotics in united states of america so you know these robots actually help you to make burgers and today these robots have been uh, adopted by cali burger chain in the us so next time you guys are visiting the united states please visit some of these cali burger chains and you'll see these robots doing the job of human beings the way i look at it there will be more usage of such technologies going forward because customers will demand touch free operations the other technology which will really see greater adoption is facial recognition for many of us who use iphone are already familiar with facial recognition so what is facial recognition facial recognition is a kind of biometric technology that assesses the characteristic of person's face in order to identify or verify them so as far as customer experience is concerned you know in a covid 19 world you will see the application broadly in three areas as i look at it first it will be used for checking temperature right it's already been used in china for taking temperature i was watching a video yesterday where in in abu dhabi airport in united arab emirates for example what they are talking about they are talking talking about using facial recognition for checking temperature of uh, of flyer so you will see facial recognition essentially to assert it health of customer so that's one the second area that you'll really see application of facial recognition is to hasten speed of delivery in quick service restaurant the third application that you'll see is in supermarkets and retail chains so what will typically happen let's say you walk into a retail uh, store you stand in front of uh, front of a facial recognition system the the system scans you it can profile you it knows it knows what are your needs and wants and then the retail store can really provide you what what you actually need of course you know there are issues with privacy but as as i always believe you know when there is a choice between safety and privacy uh safety always wins so you will see more and more application of facial recognition so you know i can really talk about the indian market so after the covid 19 pandemic you know the government has actually lost uh, launched an app you know which helps to track people who have uh, covid 19 and people who don't have covid 19 so initially you know because we are a democracy like yours there's a lot of noise but you know what we have seen over a period of time more and more customers more and more citizens have uh, downloaded that application because everybody is concerned about their health so the point that we need to keep in mind when there'll be a choice between safety and privacy customers will always go for safety the other technology you know which i see you know greater adoption going forward is voice technology so today you know uh, more and more uh, you know customers uh, today's customers are increasingly infection conscious they are concerned that their mobile devices which are touched more than 2500 times a, uh, a day you know if you were to believe a uh, research which came out recently 
what customers believe that you know if i really touch a mobile phone i can spread or it can spread corona virus so you know you will see greater adoption of voice technology you will see greater usage of smart smart speakers smart speakers will be used for asking question getting traffic update streaming music setting alarm uh, ordering food not that these are not being used of course they are being used but the way i look at it more and more of such technology will really be used for providing better consumer experience this is another technology you know you will really see greater adoption going forward drones and uh, many of your engineers uh, today and you know it so there are many uh, organizations you know who've already been trying out drones so right from amazon ups alphabet domino's pizza walmart jd.com pudu technology like in china during the wuhan crisis uh, they use these drones for supplying medicines they also use drones for supplying food to people's home who were confined in their home and they could not really go out and it has been used in many other countries the way i look at it you will see greater adoption of drones for last mile delivery going forward and what is last mile delivery we will discuss shortly and of course there are issues around regulation which many countries have and they don't really allow free movement of drones but the way i look at it more and more countries will look at this issue and you know the regulation the issues around regulations will be addressed so that you know uh, app, uh, adoption of drones uh, will will be faster this is the last emerging technology you know uh, which i will really which i see greater adoption as large number of people work and study from home they are stressed stressing networks and creating high demand for bandwidth so you know this will really force organize uh, countries to go for 5g technology so today this technology is confined to a few nations but because of covid 19 and because more and more people will work from home countries and companies will get this technology which finally the customers will benefit and it will help to improve the overall customer experience let's look at the next uh, voice the next voice that we hear from the customer today is home is the world as i told you earlier what does this mean what this essentially means the customer is essentially telling us that today we are doing whole lot of activities from home right can you really help me in doing those activities right so there are two strategies which organizations can adopt the first strategy is serve me at home and the second strategy is the new hub to execute the strategy serve me at home there are two tactics which organizations can use this first tactics is accelerate digitization and the second one is strengthen last mile now let me first talk about digitization so you know if you really talk about digitization digitization as a concept is not really new large organizations globally have really been adopting uh, have really gone for digital digital transformation over the last few years but you know what i see after this pandemic more and more organizations will really look at digitization as business imperative the second thing that i really see is that business leaders would need to step back to assess how their efforts align with new customer behavior businesses that lack robust digital backbone or online presence have struggled and will continue to struggle even after the pandemic today manufacturers you know are select are 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 selling directly to consumers so what's really happening in in many countries uh, is that you know customers because people are locked down at home manufacturers are directly supplying products to customers home so typically you know what is the way a distribution happens a distribution happens typically if you look at a consumer goods company so you have let's say a unilever unilever will send the products to a depot the depot will give it to a distributor and the distributor will directly send it to a retailer and the customer comes to a retailer and picks up the goods what is happening because of the pandemic because people are at home 
customers are directly, sorry, organizations like Unilever are directly supplying products to customers' home. And you'll see more and more such innovations. One of the things which businesses need to do, especially manufacturers, etc., they really need to put their businesses online. And all organizations who have really not looked at digitization seriously need to really take it up seriously and go ahead and implement it. And I'll give you two examples to really uh, uh, share this. So for example, in Singapore, in Singapore, there is a bank called DBS, bank globally known for innovation. What they have done what they have said that any small company in the food and beverage space, if they want to go online, they will help online in three days. And they are doing this with the help of Enterprise Singapore and Infocom Media Development Authority, government entities. So, you know, after the pandemic, many of the, many of the, small businesses in the food and beverage space, they have gone online thanks to this intervention. The other example that I wanted to give you is, so there is this large hospital chain in India called Apollo. So Apollo, uh, essentially they have large number of hospitals, very well known. So what they did last month, they actually launched an app and what this app does, any customer or any patient can really get into the app, talk about it, talk about the problem that the patient is facing, talk about the system. The app helps the patient to directly connect to a doctor. So, you know, sitting at home, you can actually consult with a doctor. So, you know, such innovations will be more going forward. And when we really talk about digitization, one of the strategies which organizations have followed over the last few years is, you know, if you really want a customer to go digital, you go ahead and limit offline operations. That's what you typically do. Now, there are some examples which I've really put on your slide. These are about three Asian companies. So the first one that you see is Airtel. Uh, Airtel is actually a large mobile phone company, which is based in India and Africa. They're very big. I think they're the world's third largest mobile company, if I'm not wrong. So, you know, after the pandemic has uh, was happened, what they said, they went ahead and told the customers that we have curtailed the operations. So please go ahead and use digital self-service. So that's what they did. Similarly, there's this another card company in Asia called SBI Card. That's what they did. But you know what? There is this bank which is called Punjab National Bank, which is based out of India, they went a, went a step further. What they say, said, and it's on your slide, they said that, please avoid visit to public places and use of currency notes, which may spread coronavirus. Instead, use net banking. So, you know, they actually created a sort of fear in customers' mind. So I think the takeaway for us is when you, offline, when you limit offline operations and use strategies like this, even the most digital lovers customer is forced to go online. And this is a strategy which many organizations have adopted earlier. And you, see, you will see many such strategies being adopted by organizations going forward. Now, when you really talk about self-service, self-service as a technology has been there for quite some time. Banks have been using it. Telecom companies have been using it. But, you know, there have been some very, very... Uh, interesting examples which i wanted to share with you from uh, to uh, from the uh, the first one is from a b2b world so uh, this the first example that you see on your slide is from this company Maersk, right as all of you know Maersk is the global uh, is the danish integrated shipping company right it's the world's largest so today if you go to their website you know on the first page itself you have all the self-service options, right? You can get to know about shipping details. You can get to know about markets which are closed. You can chat online. You can do case management. So, you know, this is a great example of a B2B company which has gone, uh, which has provided a self-service option to customer during the pandemic. Of course, this was possible 
because they had really invested in digital transformation earlier. The other example that I really like in the aviation world uh, is Delta, again, from United States of America. So Delta's website, and if you really go to their website, it functions almost like a news aggregation site, pulling together messages from Delta's leadership team, changes to flight schedules and best practices for, uh, for uh, healthy traveling. So what's good about this website, it's a creative way to push people to really do self-service. So I found it very interesting. So when you get time, please have a look. The second tactic which organizations really need to look at is they need to strengthen the last mile delivery. What is last mile delivery? As many of you wouldn't know it, last mile delivery is, is from the time. So let's say you order a product in an e-commerce company. So this is the time when the, when the product leaves the depot and reaches the consumer's house. So that's the reason it's called last mile delivery. Today, customers want all things essential at home, right? I mean, that is a global trend. So there are some interesting innovations uh, that I see and I thought I would share with you. So if you really see on the left side of your slide, so these are two big Asian, you know, uh, delivery companies called Zomato and Swiggy. So, you know, I'm seeing a very interesting trend which is happening after the pandemic. Even small stores, even small neighborhood stores, you know, offering staples and vegetables have tied up with such delivery apps like Zomato and Swiggy. So typically a customer would go to these mom and pop stores and get their products. But today when customers are not able to visit their stores, they are using these apps to get their products delivered. So that's one trend that I'm seeing. The other trend that I'm seeing, large organizations really tying up with delivery partners, right? So, you know, if you really look at large uh, consumer goods companies like Marico, ITC, Britannia, so these are large Asian fast moving consumer goods company. So what they have done, so typically the way they delivered product, as I told earlier, so first they will send their product to a depot. The depot will supply the product to a distributor. The distributor will supply the, to the product to the retailer. And then the customer would go and buy, go to the retailer and pick the product. But what these organizations are doing uh, is that today they are using these delivery apps like Zomato and Swiggy, which is there on your slide. So customers are directly getting the product from the company using these apps. So there is a lot of innovation that I see in this space with an objective to provide better experience. Now, when you really talk about uh, last mind experience, you know, one uh, uh, thing uh, or th there is a lot of conversation around Roxo. Roxo is a robot which is being tried by FedEx to for last mile delivery. So this is a picture from, uh, you know, from one of those trials which FedEx carried out last month in United States. So the way I look at it more and more, as I mentioned earlier, you would see companies using robots for last mile delivery. There are many companies in China and Japan who are using such technology, even in India for last mile delivery. And I see because of customers being cooped at home, you will see such technology being more and more used going forward. Let's look at the new stra next strategy. The next strategy is uh, 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 the next strategy is the new hub. So uh, uh, the new hub. So what is the, 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 there are two tactics to address this strategy. The first one is support activities at home. And the second one is do it yourself takes center stage. So, you know, today, if you really look at a customer, the customer is doing a whole lot of things from home, right? I mean, today, I'm sure all of you are at home attending this conference, right? So today you are working from home, you're exercising from home, you're ordering food from home, you are even learning from home, right? So it is very important for organizations to really understand what is it that a customer doing at home. So if you really see the image on your side, the graph, uh, this is from Cantor. You know, Cantor, the global market research company, it actually shows the global trend of what a customer 
typically did in the month of March. And this is the global data. So as an organization, what one needs to do, you need to carry out similar research for your market segment, for your customers and understand what is it that the customers are doing at home today and what are the products and experiences that you can offer to customers which will support their activities at home. I think that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is innovate offline experiences and support customers at home. So today, customers are not able to leave their home, right? So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, there are gyms, you know, there are gyms which you would have visited earlier. Today, you're not able to visit the gyms because you are at home. Also, you are worried if I visit the gym, I may get infected. So, you know, what gyms are doing, for example, they are sending videos to customers, right? With bite-sized lessons on exercise, which the customers could do. So this is a great example of getting an offline experience to customers' home. There is an another innovation which I just picked up, which is being tried out by an Indian uh, company. So today, you know, many of us are not really able to go to barbers, right? You see the condition of my hair, it's large, shriveled up. So, and even when, even when the lockdown opens, when it, even when things are normal, many of us, many of us will be very cautious about going to the barber. So what this organization is planning to offer, they are planning to offer barber service at home. So what they are telling when this, when these guys come, they will come with all the precautions. They will come with hazmat suits, etc., and do the cutting of their hair at home. So this is another example of really getting an offline experience to a consumer's home. The last thing that you really need to remember, this is a great opportunity to create intimate uh, experience for the customer. Because today, when we are all confined at home, we would really like intimate experience. So uh, what would that mean? Let's say you are a bank, right? And you are a high net worth individual customer. So it's your birthday today. So what the bank could do, the bank could send a cake through contactless delivery. And then you also have a relationship manager with the bank who talks to you on a regular basis. So this relationship manager could call you on a video and maybe sing a happy birthday song for you. So we, you know, when organizations create such intimate experiences, customers would really love it. The other strategy, which other tactic, which customers should really keep in mind, they should remember that do it yourself will take center stage, right? So today, you know, one of the global trend that one sees after the coronavirus, globally, the purchase of following products have gone up. Things like sewing machine, home baking, ease, cleaning gadgets, gardening tools, hair dye, skincare tools, etc. Because more and more people are doing things themselves, right? And typically, if you really look at a customer, he is spending time in doing three things. One of the three things, and it's on your slide. The first thing is he is spending time in learning a new skill. A new skill could be things like learning a new language. The second thing that a customer is doing, he could be accomplishing a goal. Accomplishing a goal could be maybe he is working towards uh, making a website. The third thing that the customer could be doing is he could be making an improvement. This could essentially mean that uh, you have a garage, maybe you want to clean the garage. So, you know, these are the type of things which the customer is doing. And when the customer is doing such things, because he's sitting at home, he's using apps like Duolingo and Masterclass. So if you see on a slide, you see those two pictures in the center. So what is a Duolingo app? Duolingo app is essentially used for learning new languages, right? And Masterclass app is essentially used for learning skills from experts in your field. So, when, so today customers have started using these apps. So the way I look at it going forward, once customers start using these apps, they will continue using it. So what is the way forward for the organization? The way for, uh, forward for organization are the uh, three solutions which I'm recommending. First is provide do-it-yourself assistance. What is do-it-yourself assistance? Let me give you an example. 
So let's say you are an air conditioner manufacturer. So let's say if you buy an air conditioner, what typically happens, and I don't know what happens in a Mexican market, but I can tell you what happens in Asia. So if you buy an air conditioner, the company sends a person every four months to clean your air conditioner. That's what he does. So you know what the manufacturer could do today, because customers really won't be comfortable to get any person at home. They could provide a do-it-yourself assistance on a video. Essentially, on a video, the company could teach the customer on how they could clean the air conditioner. Right? So that's an example of providing do-it-yourself uh, assistance. The second one is a prov a pivoting the existing product or service to a do-it-yourself experience. So what this means is even if you're product providing a product today, can you really convert it into an experience which the customer can really do himself or herself at home. Let's say you are an ice cream manufacturer, right? So how, how could you create a do-it-yourself experience? Maybe, you know, you will give a recipe, you will give a mechanism, you will give a, 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 a set of things which really allows the customer to make a sundae at home, right? Instead of you going outside and buying a sundae, maybe you can really make a sundae at home. Let me give you another example what, uh, how this could be done. So there is this company, company in Asia called Asian Paints. So this is a very large paint manufacturing company. So what they do, they not only sell paints, but they also come and paint in customers' house. So, you know, how could they pivot their experience? They could pivot the experience that going forward, maybe they could provide a product wherein the customer could himself paint the house. Maybe they could do it through uh, 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 a virtual reality or they could do it through uh, a video. So, you know, those are the type of solutions which organizations can offer, which can really provide an opportunity for customer to really take their offline experience to customer's home. And last but not the least, encourage customers to do, to do, do it yourself. Now, this is more relevant to Asian countries. Uh, now, in Asian countries, because, you know, labor is cheap, you know, we are not very comfortable to do, to do, to, uh, for do-it-yourself product. And what is a do-it-yourself product? Products which are from companies like IKEA. So what happens in IKEA product, as many of you know it, you get it in a small box, and then you are supposed to assemble it, right? Like it happens in the United States of America and many Western countries. So, you know, this is a great opportunity for such companies to really encourage people to adopt do-it-yourself products. Let's look at the last voice, which is focus on the familiar. So what is the customer telling here? The customer is telling here that I'm not ready to experiment, right? Please don't come to me with new products. I want to be with my existing product. I'm also looking for a product which addresses my concern of health and value. So there are two strategies which companies can adopt. The first one is build on trust and second is health and value. So uh, under build on trust, there are two tactics which companies can take. The first is preference for tried and tested and products of local origin. Let me, let me uh, walk you through each one of them. So today, as I uh, pre preference for tried and tested. So today, uh, you know, customers are really not keen to go for novel and trendy products, right? They want to be with their existing customer because, you know, what they believe that the existing company with whom they do business with will not take advantage and profit from the crisis. So as an organization, you know, if you're a business organization, you need to remember, please don't go ahead with new products and services with your organization, right? I think some innovation is fine, but please don't go back with products for which the customer doesn't really have appetite. So that's the first takeaway. The second takeaway is focus on creating positive experiences. How would you do it? This you could do in two ways. The first one is going above and beyond, going above and beyond 
means let me give you an example let's say you are a bank customer you are a wealthy bank customer and you are unwell so you know when you call up a uh, so your bank you you have a relationship manager who takes care of your needs so when the relationship manager gets to know that you are unwell and you are confined to home he organizes medicines for you you know this is a great way to really creep create positive memories in customers mind so that is about going above and beyond the other way to go above uh, to other way to create positive memories is when the organization does something for the larger community let me give you some example for example uh, louis vuitton uh, Mo, uh, moet hennessy has repurposed its fragrance manufacturing and today supplying sanitizers right for example mcdonalds in germany you know what it did it lent its staff to aldi and aldi is a retailer so they had shortage of people and they uh, they uh, they supplied it or for that matter general motors general motors in united states of america is making uh, uh, ventilators of course there was a dictum from president trump too uh if you look at a company called mahindra's mahindra's is a large automotive company in asia what they have done they are today making ventilators and masks so you know when organizations take such steps it really stays in customers mind and they will remember it for quite some time the other thing which organizations really need to remember that please keep in mind that that availability is a differentiator so while you do everything please make sure that your product is available because if your product is not available customers will leave you and go now when all this happens i also see the rise of products of local origin so more and more you know you'll see in a in a in a uh, covid 19 world a great appetite for products and experience for local er origin and there are the issues are very simple and it's on your slide the first is today there are availability issues right so products are locally available it will not happen second you know you as a citizen would really like to support local businesses right because e e economies are impacted because of covid 19 third it aligns with their home grown heritage it addresses issues around safety and freshness and it also you know meets local preferences so the way i look at it this is a great opportunity to provide experiences of local origin and when we talk about product of local origin origin i also see rise of conscious consumerism what is conscious consumerism you know this is a trend wherein customers make positive purchase decision helping to balance some of the negative impacts that consumers have had on the planet so you know you will see more and more usage uh, more and more talk and experience around things like ethical banking usage of you know a green energy sustainable production eco friendly packaging etc not that these were not there of course they were there but the way i look at it there'll be more there will be greater appetite for such products going forward this is the last strategy uh, that i wanted to talk about health and value and under health and value there are two tactics that we need to keep in mind uh, the health lens and revisit what is value so today you know customers are all worried about health you and i we are all worried about health right i mean uh, so we don't really want to go out because you don't know who has uh, corona virus or not so one of the things that organizations need to do need to do is whatever product or experience that they are offering to customer they need to make sure that the elements of health and hygiene has been addressed so that's one second if you are providing an experience make sure that all touch points have the required protocol and as i said earlier health will always win over uh, privacy now let me give you some examples of products which are which are which are being launched keep after the corona virus so this is an example from china china in china you know geely automobiles geely automobile is essentially the owner of volvo and lotus companies right in europe so they is uh, recently launched a vehicle called suv called icon so this they claim they have a purification system that can prevent the entry of 
coronavirus, COVID-19 virus. So that's one example. You will see such innovative products going forward. For example, you know, you could have air conditioners, which will have filtration system, which will not allow, allow viruses. Or for that matter, you know, if there are elevators, elevators could have but buttons, which are antibacterial and antivirus. So you will see more and more such products being looked at and companies will really be forced to look at this dimension. If you really look at the experience front, on the experience front, and uh, you will see more and more customer experience, uh, more and more customer experience being designed with keeping health in mind. And this is an example you know, that I put together from the auto industry. Going forward, if you have to buy a car, you may not really visit the store. So you will sit at home, you will do a virtual tour and decide on the car that you want to visit, uh, want to buy. Then, you know, you will do all the negotiation on phone, uh, on, on video. And then, you know, the store will directly deliver the sanitized car to your home. So the entire buying process will be contactless. Beyond that, you know, on the product itself, the car itself, you'll see many innovations, you know, there could be, you will see the car using uh, antibacterial material. You could see, you know, separation between passengers. So, you know, you will see, or, you know, you will see uh, 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 like the icon example, a filtration system, which really prevents bacteria and virus. Now, this is the last strategy, which, uh, sorry, last tactic, which organizations need to keep in mind when they are, uh, when they are uh, looking at redesigning the customer experience for, uh, for customers in a COVID-19 world. So they really need to understand what is value for customer. What does the word value mean for customer? The word value simply means what is it that the customer really benefits from today? So the word value in a customer world means benefits. So today, if you really look at customers, customers look at four elements, right? As far as value is concerned. That's how I look at it. The first one is value for money. What does value for money mean? And many of you are quality, uh, quality experts, uh, uh, you would know. Value for money essentially means something which is correctly priced. So today, you know, when, when customers may not really have the appetite to go for expensive products or, you know, pr products which are highly priced. So it's very important for organizations to keep in mind, you need to correctly price your product. So that's the first one. The second one, the product on experience should really reduce the risk. What this means, it should be the safest option for customer. The third element of value is it should require less effort. What does less effort mean? It should help to get the work done with least effort. And the last one is it should reduce anxiety. So, you know, you should not offer any product or experience which causes anxiety in customers' mind. So how do you really translate it in, in, your, uh, in your organization? You know, you have to go ahead and translate these elements of value into your products and your experience. So just to summarize what we've done, this is almost like a playbook. So there are four voices that we hear from customer. The four voices are address my concern, safety is paramount, Home is the world, focus on the familiar. And what are the strategies which organizations can use? The first strategy is communicate, 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 demonstrate care, under safety is paramount, who, what, when, touch free operations. Under for, hope, for addressing this voice, home is the world, two strategies, serve me at home and the new hub. And the last voice, focus on the familiar, there are two strategies that companies can adopt, build on trust and health and value. So what is the way forward? This is the last slide before I close. Uh, this is what the organizations should do. First and foremost, they should go ahead and serve the customer, right? And that this they should do with a lot of empathy. The second thing that they should do, they should really revisit 
customer's persona, customer's context, and understand what is service intent. Service intent essentially means what is customer experience today for the organization? Because my sense is it would really need to be redefined. Then, you know, organizations really need to understand the existing customer journeys. And last but not the least, they need to re redesign their value proposition, touch points, and experience. Have any questions in case if there are any? Thank you, Rev. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for this conference, excellent conference, and this uh, uh, very interesting topic. Uh, we have a couple questions from our students and the uh, community. I will read it for you. And um, the first one is from Gabby, uh, who asks, uh, how, can, how can small businesses implement these strategies, considering they don't have a lot of resources and are at risk of closing or going, going out of businesses? Of, of business. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's a fantastic question. And I think this is a problem in many countries, especially, you know, if you're talking about small business, you know, how do they really uh, work on some of them? I think, you know, this is where uh, organized, uh, even small businesses really need to work innovatively. And so let me give you one example. So let's say if I'm a so small business and today I'm struggling to really make sure that the product gets delivered to customers home, right? Let's say that's the problem that we are addressing. So what you could do is, you know, you could tie up with say, let's say delivery apps. I don't know if it's there in Mexico or not. You have to look at such solutions wherein there are these delivery partners, which, which for a small fee would be willing to deliver your product to customers. So that is, those are the type of solutions, you know, which, uh, which, uh, I think uh, organizations could look at. Uh, the other thing that is very important, uh, I, I know it costs money. I think more and more organizations would really have to see how they can digitize their business. Because I think it's becoming a business imperative. Because if you are not digitizing a business, businesses will just close down. Because increasingly, increasingly as I look at it, digitization is becoming a business imperative and companies would really have to do something around it. Thank you, Dev. Uh, we have a couple more questions before we close the uh, conference. Uh, the second, the, the first one is from Ingrid, who asked, uh, how do you think people as entrepreneurs can improve today due, due to this pandemic? I, I didn't understand the question. Can you repeat it, Juan? Yeah, I will. Sure. How do you think people as entrepreneurs can improve today due to this pandemic? How do me? entrepreneurs improve? Exactly. Okay. So uh, I think, you know, there are, there are some of the things which I think uh, organizations should, uh, uh, can really look at. Uh, the first thing, I think this is a great opportunity to really understand what is of value to customer, right? I think that is the first thing that uh, entrepreneurs should do. Second, what they should really look at, do they really need to revisit the delivery models? I think the way they deliver a product, uh, should it be the same way? That is the second thing. The third thing uh, that they should really look at what is it that they need to really change, what processes, practices that they need to change so that they become relevant in a world beyond COVID-19. I think these are some of the things which entrepreneurs need to do. And last but not the least, uh, which is very important, is that I see great application of you know, methodologies like lean, et cetera, lean manufacturing, et cetera. What organizations, of course, need to keep in mind that while they focus on cost, it should not really impact experience, right? I think these are some of the suggestions that I will have for entrepreneurs. 
Thank you, Dev. And the last question is coming from Gabby, who asks, uh, uh, do you think all companies should continue to use these measures even after the pandemic? Uh, the, you mean the, 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 the things that I mentioned? The strategies that I mentioned? Yes. Okay. So if the question is, if Gabby's uh, question is that, uh, should a company carry on with the strategies which I mentioned after the pandemic? So the way I look at it, this is the strategy which any company would have to follow for the next 18 to 24 months. The reason is till you don't have a vaccine, till this problem is really not addressed, customers are going to demand things differently. So this is a plan, this is a playbook, which will be relevant for at least the next 18 to 24 months. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, Dev. Well, with this last question, we close the, uh, the conference. Uh, just to give, uh, give you, uh, um, I mean, we are very happy to, to have you here uh, uh, giving us this, this uh, interesting topic. By the way, for all the assistance, um, Dev is join us, joining us from uh, Bombay, India. So I think he's uh, like uh, 8 p.m. over there. So thank you very much, Dev. Uh, to joining us here in Mexico about this topic. And uh, I think it's very interesting, all the information that you can uh, share with us in terms of, uh, of the way that the, the world is changing uh, after the COVID. So for all the assistance, thank you very much for your assistance. And uh, well, uh, we will be programming more and more uh, video conferences to, to you in, with this uh, kind of interest topics. Thank you very much. Dev, uh, very happy to have you here uh, virtually, and uh, we will be on touch. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful meeting you. Thanks to everybody who was a part of this uh, session over the last one and a half hours. And last but not least, thanks to Veronica if she's on the uh, video conference. Thank you so much. And thank you all. Thanks a lot. Good day and good night. Bye-bye. Thank you, Dev. Thank you. Bye-bye. Gracias a todos por asistir y por estar presentes en la videoconferencia. Bueno, pues, con esto, pues, hemos terminado. Yo les agradezco mucho su tiempo y su, su asistencia a este pequeño seminario web. Ahí está la, la página de Extensión Universitaria, el correo electrónico, por si tienen alguna duda adicional. Y bueno, pues yo soy su servidor con Temo González. Me dio mucho gusto escucharlos y verlos el día de hoy. Muchas gracias a todos y muy buenas tardes.